Good morning, get set for another 90 minutes of fantastic food and trust me, you don't want to be missing this one. This is Saturday Kitchen Live. Welcome to the show. In the kitchen today, we have the newly decorated Ching He Wang MBE. <laughs> Ching doesn't like to talk about it, so let's not flag it up anymore, <laughs> apart from when it's written in front of me. Uh, and to help us celebrate Diwali with this modern take on Indian cuisine, it's Vivek Singh. Good morning, Vivek. <laughs> Happy Diwali. Thank you very much. It's nice to see you. Uh, Ollie Smith is here delivering the drinks. Good morning, all. Good morning, Matt. You well? Thriving, thanks. Yeah, I mean, full thoughts. Top gear. Good, top gear. <laughs> uh, and now our special guest today is part of the biggest selling girl group of all time with 85 million records sold worldwide and countless number one singles globally. So it's safe to say that she knows a thing or two about hits. She's definitely going to spice up our lives this morning. It's the fantastic Melanie C. Good morning, Matt. <laughs> How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm a little bit croaky today. Would you like some water? I don't know. I'd love some water. Can we get some water for Melanie yeah. C, please? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Thank you very nice. much. Thank now, you. Listen, we're, uh, we're going to talk all about your new album. It came yes. out uh, just about a month ago now? Yeah, beginning of October it yeah. came out, yeah. Okay. Uh, very kind of upbeat, disco kind of feel to it. Yeah, it's a pop record, mm -hmm. but it's quite dance-influenced. Bit mm -hmm. of disco, bit of 90s feel. Cool. Um, bit of house in there. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. It's kind of what we need right now. Yeah, it's been <laughs> Life's amazing. pretty yeah, you know what's been really good? Because it was more inspired by my 2019. Right. For it to come out in 2020, it yeah. is quite upbeat yeah. and positive. And I think it's been good, yeah. Thanks. I think it's been good for people. Thanks yeah. for doing that. Yeah. Uh, right, let's see what's <laughs> on the menu today. Ching, you've got an interesting number. Yeah, it's uh, called Veggie Ants Climbing Trees. So it's a Sichuan classic. Okay. It's a street snack dish. Um, really umami, rich, full of flavour. I'm going to show you how to sort of jazz it up, but, you know, gluten-free style. This is really... Right. Really healthy and um, yeah, I hope you're gonna so like these, it. So these are veggie ants. No ants were harmed in the No real of ants. Yeah. I promise you. Right, good. <laughs> no good, good to know. Uh, Vivek, you've got a, a Diwali dish for us. Yes, so I, I'm bringing you a stir-fried marrow and shrimp. Okay. Uh, curry, a classic Bengali Diwali feast thing. And of course, we've got to have some sweets. Interesting. In interesting combination, that. Huh? Yes. Yes. Are you making marrow tasty? Oh, yes, you will see. <laughs> good. Uh, we can make marrow taste. Good, good, good. Uh, do you like the sound of those dishes? <laughs> Amazing. It's brilliant, actually. It's perfect today because Asian flavours are probably my favourite. Right. Oh, you, yes. yes. you spent a long time in, in Malaysia, didn't you? I did, actually, I did a, a season of Asia's Got Talent. Yeah. Um, nice. Which was amazing, yeah. Great place. To really get into it, because there's so many different cultures, it's such a varied yeah. continent. Yeah. It was really interesting, yeah. How did you get on with the drinks this week, Ol? I love them, full of flavour and full of joy as well. And I found two extraordinary wines to pair. One, a hidden gem from France, and the other, a totally maverick blend from New Zealand. It's very overexcited, isn't it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got a dish uh, inspired by Rick Stein's travels in Alsace. So I'm going to do choucroute garlic, one of my favourite dishes. Uh, it's an Alsatian dish using pork shoulder, smoked bacon, breakfast, sausages, loads of choucroute or sauerkraut potatoes. Uh, and trust me, it is delicious. Uh, now, Mel, at the end of the show, yes. facing food heaven, food hell. Yes. Talk about your food heaven. OK, so it's so many to choose from because mm. I do love so many different kinds of foods. But I think this time of year, I love a roast. Okay. The, the, the meat I would always go to is lamb, but I love it with all the trimmings, cabbage, carrot, or gravy, loads of mint sauce, okay. lashings of mint sauce. Is that kind of like a nostalgic childhood thing? It really is. It's funny because I was talking to my dad the other day and we were talking about my, my nan, God rest her soul, not with us anymore, but she used to make the most amazing roast lamb Right, yeah. nice. And what about hell? Hell, hmm. I found this one more difficult because I do like mm -hmm. most foods, yeah. but I can't be doing with okra. Can't be doing with it. No matter how it's served to me, I've even had like okra, like crisps, you can get it in a bag, you right. know, like yeah. some healthy kind of like snack. Yeah. Always slimy, <laughs> always a bit yeah. hairy. Sorry, that was a bit inappropriate, wasn't well, it? Uh, <laughs> uh, don't worry, um, they've heard worse. So, <laughs> 
So yeah, so the nation, it's up to you. And you know what? This is TV. So honestly, if you if you say hell, I'm cool with that because it's all really? entertainment, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Well, if the viewers give you heaven, it's going to be a pimped up lamb roast. Uh, so I'm going to roast a saddle of lamb in anchovy and thyme butter. I'm going to serve it with some roasted carrots and parsnips, uh, some cabbage leaves that have been stuffed with some more lamb. Uh, some chestnuts, uh, some oh, mushrooms, I love and some spinach. Do you love a chestnut? Yeah, me and my puts them in the sprouts at Christmas. Yeah, there you go. Oh, nice. Good like yeah. that. And finish that with a load of mint sauce. Uh, if they give you hell, it's going to be slimy okra. Uh, so I'm going to make it. I'm not going to make it slimy, though. Slimy, slimy okra. okra. <laughs> going to love it. I'm going to make an okra stew using tomatoes and garlic and spices and chilli. I'm going to bake that and serve that with little slices of okra that have been deep fried in buttermilk polenta and paprika. Like those crisps that you hate as well. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to wait till the end of the show to find out which one the, uh, the viewers will vote for. Uh, so guys, go and log on to the website now to vote for Melanie's Food Heaven or Hell. Obviously, you can view the terms and privacy notices there as well if you're interested in that sort of thing. Uh, and as ever, we've, uh, we've been... S uh, sorry, as ever, you've been sending in lots and lots of pictures of all the recipes you've created at home. So here's our mood board this week. Uh, so we've got, this is an upside down tart to town that hasn't been turned out yet. That's Chivy's fondant, which uh, Ooh, that looks, looks good, doesn't it? Looks really nice, actually. That's, that's nicer than when Shiv turned out last week. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, sorry, Shiv. Uh, this is Nigella's cake. That was delicious. Um, there's that dirty sandwich I made, uh, the Reuben, the other week. Very nice. Right, let's have a closer look at a few of these. Uh, first up, we've got Katrina and Mark. They enjoyed date night. Is that that's another thing? Apparently, it's uh, a total thing. Is it, Ollie? It's a total. Uh, yes. thing. There's a voice behind this this picture. So they made Jason and Atherton's ox cheek and longestines. Very nice. Mm. Look at that. I nice. like these glasses. I, like, I know. Glasses good. Is place nice. good. The candle. They've gone all out there on date yeah. night. Uh, and Adam was a brave man taking on Keith Floyd's salt cod stew from last week's show. That looks better than what Keith made, actually. Uh, and finally, uh, Katie made uh, a picture-perfect version of Bryn's beetroot tarts are down. Very oh. nice. Look at Ooh. that. It's, uh, it's not burnt. It's beetroot. That's beetroot coloured. It's not burnt. <laughs> We've had this discussion. It's not burnt. Uh, well done, Katie. Keep them coming in. Just send them over to us at saturday.kitchen at cactustv.co.uk or share them using the hashtag SaturdayKitchen. Right, should we do some cooking? Right. Sure. So, yeah. Ching, uh, you're up first. Vivek, yes. you're going to nip off. Yep. Let's keep See socially distant here. You can yep. have a coffee. Yep. Uh, so, ants, veggie ants climbing veggie trees. Veggie ants climbing trees, yeah. So, I've got here some mung bean noodles, and I just want to soak these because I want to prepare them in real time. Um, they're made of mung bean and uh, they're starch. Okay. So, otherwise known as glass noodles, basically. So, we're going to just prep them first, just 10 minutes in hot water, so and then they're ready to go. I thought they were rice noodles, no? Huh? They're mung bean noodles. Yeah, mung bean noodles. But so, do rice noodles look the same as well? Uh, yeah, they look a bit similar, but okay. actually, rice noodles are a bit more more opaque in colour, so they're okay. not as translucent. So um, mung bean noodles are. So we're just gonna. Um, we've got here the basically the soy mince, and it's kind of like making couscous in a sense. You just need to rehydrate it. And okay. basically, what soy mince or dried soy mince is, is that um, it's dried. Um, uh, it's pressed soybeans fresh, and then it's been steamed. The oil, sorry, okay. the oil is pressed out of it, and then it's steamed, and then it's re uh, dehydrated, and then you rehydrate right. it just by adding hot water or stock like okay. that. Yeah. I okay. don't know what. Yeah. I don't so, know why I'm walking away from it. People do, Ching. <laughs> don't worry. It's, uh, so this threatening, uh, threatening look at. Um, so tell us about this name. Where does the name come from? Okay. So uh, ants climbing trees in Chinese we call mai sang shu. And it's very sort of poetic. Um, but actually, the, the legend has it that somebody in the village in, in Sichuan uh, basically made this dish and served it to their grandmother. And they were like, um, what is, you know, yeah. the grandmother was like, couldn't see properly and was like, is that ants climbing trees on those branches there in that dish? <laughs> really? And that's so, where yeah. the name came from? And that's where the name comes from. Bad so, eyesight. Uh, yeah, basically bad eyesight. Um, but it's it's a really lovely dish. It's a simple uh, street snack dish. Um, you can get it, you know, uh, in Tengdu or in Tongqing, and it's it's lovely. And I, I like it. I think you know what? It's under um, undersold mm -hmm. because we have a lot of Asian dishes actually that I think are just so beautiful, but yet people still don't know about them because everyone kind of sticks to the comforting, you know, yeah. sweet and sour and there's nothing wrong with that, sweet and sour and, you know, yeah. hot and sour, those sort of flavours. So we kind of forget these simple, honest, uh, humble dishes that actually take a few fresh ingredients. I mean, you're talking garlic, ginger, chilies, um, and then mostly store cupboard ingredients. 
And, you know, Mel, maybe in Malaysia, you would have tried, like, a, a variation of this because that whole region, you know, fuses, like, Chinese, Malay, Indian um, mm. sort of cuisines. And there is a, a, a mai fan, a mm -hmm. mee fan, uh, like a hakka-style mee fan that uses minced pork with mm. rice noodles that is very similar to this. So okay. it's, it's really, really nice, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to... This is not really the traditional part of this dish, so I'm just um, frying some leeks. What did you dust those in? I dusted them in half corn flour and cut half potato flour. Okay, that's just the, um, just the crispy kind just of... Just to give protein. them a nice crisp, crispness, yeah. And then um, some more seasoning of some caster sugar okay. and some uh, white pepper, and that's just so delicious. That's like crisp. So you've got salt, you know. that salt sugar taste, so that's, that's essentially yeah. like the, that sort of seaweed element. Yeah, exactly. Like, well... It's umami. It's okay. umami, but it, it's crunchy and it's fragrant. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I love to put just a little twist on it and things that people at home could do and really easily, you know, right. without overcomplicating things. But, you know, if you're having, if you're at home and, you know, having a dinner party, you yeah. want to do something a little bit, you know, a bit more kind of, I don't know. You, you, it's always so much more to, to, <laughs> to Chinese food, isn't it? I, mean, I always get very upset when I go to a Chinese restaurant. And, you know, there's, there's the kind of the Western menu and then yeah. there's the Chinese menu. And you have to ask for that one. Yeah. Because I mean, they, they're all the kind of interesting things. They, they don't give me the Chinese menu, are they? They're not. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, the Chinese menu, in terms... It, there's so much there to be discovered. Mm. Like, so much we still don't know, um, and I don't know. Um, but uh, because China and Chinese cuisine and the whole of Asia is so vast, and yeah. there's so many influences from everywhere, it's really hard to just kind of succinctly put it on a menu, I think. Yeah. And I think, in, in actual fact, what, what's really good is to have a variety, a changing menu, mm. I think, so that people could really experience, you know, all the different flavours. Speaking um, of which, you've got, so you've got two elements to this dish. So, yeah, so this is just my little side dish. I just want to show you how easy it is to do broccoli. Um, and basically, just really simply, um, some garlic ginger chilli, Shaoxing rice wine, goji berries, some fresh broccoli that I've sliced across the floret, so it's like okay. flat slices. It's just for, for presentation. Right. Rice wine, a little bit of sesame oil, and I'm just going to thicken it. Just kind of bring it together, marry the flavours together with some corn flour. Okay. And a little bit of stock. Okay. Um, and and this, then, is, this is a super quick... This is super bit. quick, yeah. I mean, but you just want to see how... Beautifully, all this comes together, and the trick is shaoxing rice wine. You've got to okay. have shaoxing really, rice wine. Really, that makes everything tasty. Yeah, I think it does. Oh well, that was good. Okay. Okay, so that's that's. Your um, your mum. Uh, didn't she teach you to cook a, a sweet and sour? Pork, yeah. Pork my mum actually, uh, so in the 80s, mm. um, yeah, we had fabulous food because my mum, who's watching, hi mum, uh, <laughs> she, um, she loves to cook everything from scratch. Right. And, you know, she was doing dishes that none of my friends yeah. had tried. You yeah. know, it was amazing. And it was just like, yeah, on the weekly menu. So, yeah, we were nice. lucky, yeah. So she's really adventurous. Yeah, yeah. she is. Oh, great. So she's doing um, her Christmas cake today. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's an epic, isn't it? So, I've got here some uh, garlic ginger chilli, and then you see the mince, the soy mince, mm -hmm. which I think is, it's got a really lovely, clean flavour. And, you know, if you're trying to reduce the amount of meat that you eat, I think that this is a really good alternative. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, this recipe is also in my next book, um, Asian Green. And okay. there's lots of, you know, plant-based um, alternatives. And, What's great about Asian cuisine is that, is that it offers all these, you know, different sure. flavours and also interchangeable um, sort of dishes so that you know, in terms of protein um, and vegetables. So it's, it's flexible, it's adaptable and, of um, and healthy. Of all the cuisines in the world, I think you have so many fantastic sources and additions. You can oh. make anything tasty, can't you? Yeah. You, uh, uh, thank really? you. I mean, I'm even, biased. Um, even minced... Soya. Even, even made soy like this. Listen, don't knock it. I, in fact, I chose it again because I knew you liked it the it last was, time. It was I very nice. You. Very nice, so, yeah. Um, so I thought we would reintroduce it, you know, and reinforce it. So, um, 
So yeah, so a little bit more tamari went in there. Mm -hmm. And if you have dark soy, that's so, absolutely fine. And tamari is, is what? Change? And tamari is the gluten-free soy. Okay. So um, it's still got that depth of umami. It's still got a lovely clean note. Um, and uh, yeah. There's and not it offers a lot of difference that... in flavour. No, no. I think it's it works really wonderfully well. But it's hard to get a dark soy that's gluten-free. Okay. And dark is really for colour. But we still manage to get a lovely depth and richness of colour in this dish with the tamari, which is really nice. Um, OK, then we're going to go in with some Shaoxing rice wine. Um, and I'm just going to show you, uh, traditionally, this dish in China, we use dou ban jiang which is a chili bean paste. Mm -hmm. It's basically, again, fermented soy. This time we're using a different kind of fermented soy in the form of miso. Now, miso is also gluten-free. Okay. If you use brown rice miso. Okay. So this has a different kind of umami. Mm -hmm. You would love this richness um, and this f the fermented notes. Um, and it's got a, a kind of sweetness to it as well, which I love. Um, we're going to put in some rice vinegar. And then we're going to pour that in. It's so weird that we can't cook together. But you can't help me cook. It's quite relaxing <laughs> for me, I'd say. It's very relaxing, yeah. isn't it? It's I don't not mind fair. it. Just loitering around here on the corner. OK. Is there any dishes that you picked up in, in Malaysia that you sort of keep going um, back to? No, I, I think I tend to go for, like, the, the most popular dish in the country. I kind mm. of wish I'd been a little bit more adventurous, really. Yeah. It's great I think it can place. be difficult sometimes. I was in China um, last year and I was so excited to get some real authentic Chinese mm. food. But I kept getting sent to like European restaurants. Uh, okay. Because yeah, I think they, they think that's what that we happens. want, you know? Yeah. 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 Where were you? What part? I actually can't even remember. Come back to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, come back to me. It's Saturday <laughs> morning. It was, it was a whirlwind, whirlwind <laughs> tour. It was. I think I was there for two days. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, we're almost there. Now, at this stage, I'm just going to add in some stock, OK? And this just... I know it sounds strange, because you wanted this to be a, a dry sort of dish, but actually, the noodles and the soy mints just soak up all that flavour, and it just enrich, enriches it. So if you have the time and you mm -hmm. just cook it down now for literally another minute, the colours intensify, the flavours intensify, and that stock just cooks out. And what is that, veg stock? And that's just veg stock. Okay. But you could use, um, of course, obviously it's a veggie dish. Sure. But if you were doing this with pork mince, you mm. could use, like, you know, beef stock if you wanted to, uh, or chicken stock. So that's it. It's, it's really, this is a really kind of gentle, beautiful and simple dish. And just last I tried, but not I least, had some great just the spring onions. In, uh, in China. Really interesting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff I would revisit insects? as well. Things like insects. Things like insects, things like chicken's feet and sesame <laughs> seeds. Um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's all, it's all interesting. It's all part of the you experience. Said, did, you it? had ants? The, the yeah, real... I think we had ants. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, and what you forget, it's such a vast country. Yeah, I mean, the thing is... That there's sort of differences in every, every province you go to. is. Uh, it's yeah. got different kind of leanings, doesn't it? I, I think, you know, the dishes are, are such that, you know, we use a very little amount of protein um, uh, and then to flavour the dish. And the rest is basically rice or noodles, yeah. you know, or dumplings, like the wheat flour wrappings. Yeah. Um, so, it, it, you know, a little goes a long way. And I think that's a really sustainable way of cooking. What's that these leaf? Days. So I've got a little bamboo leaf. Now, if you don't have that at home, it doesn't matter. Doesn't look like the bamboo leaves I have at home in my garden. They're really small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're really thin. Worried aren't about they? pandas in this junction. <laughs> okay. You're just never short on, on portion size, are you? Sorry, I just, yeah. yeah. I'm a feeder, actually. You are a feeder. I am a sound. feeder. Sorry, I learned that from my grandma. <laughs> um, but I'm going <clears> to just <throat> put that there. And just so the new book, is it, is it uh, entirely vegetarian? Um, it's all actually plant-based. It's all vegan. It's all vegan. Actually. Okay. Yeah. And this is something you, you practice as well, don't you? Uh, Your partner's uh, vegan. Yeah, so. at home, uh, you know, we are mostly um, vegan at home because hubby is. And um, because he actually cured his asthma, okay. which is surprisingly, because yeah. it's something that you can't, you know, ever cure. Um, from going plant-based and this was a few years ago and so um, it's really changed his life 
and because he loves to exercise. Yeah. He loves, I mean, we love the, your Blame It On Me um, video oh, where yeah. you're like fight, you know, street fighter yeah. style um, stuff. So he loves all of that Kung Fu stuff. And Sounds a bit um, anyway, <laughs> so he, um, yeah, he's cured himself of it and just through diet. So, you know, we, we really don't know. I mean, I think plant power uh, is, is the next big thing right really. it looks amazing Ching. remind us what right. it's called so this is called veggie ants climbing trees and don't forget the crispy veggie ants climbing trees yeah. beautiful <laughs> right okay. can I take it now yeah you can I'll stop fussing now sorry okay. you need to move yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks <Ching. laughs> right <clears throat> I'm going to embarrass myself with chopsticks. Yeah, Thank you. yeah, we had that chat earlier, actually. Oh, right. I forgot Ooh. the little dollop of sriracha sauce. So, like um, here, I'll take that. On the side. Uh, Ollie, what have we got here, wine-wise? We have Marks & Spencer's Classics <laughs> Pinot Gris. It's from their new range, and this wine comes from Alsace. It is as sumptuous sriracha. and silky as a mm. velvet peach. Now, if you think of all the fragrance in the dish, it's quite full of flavour, but the texture's soft. And this wine does pretty much exactly the same thing. Lots of lovely fruity character from Alsace. That's thanks to the Vosges Mountains, which create a rain shadow, allowing the grapes to enjoy all of the sunshine and get fully ripe. And that's exactly what you want with this level of umami in the dish. But this wine here, an inside track wine. Alsace deserves to be a headline star. This is why. That's delicious. Mm. I love an Alsace wine. How's that? Mm. It's really good. It quite possibly is the most difficult thing to eat with chopsticks ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on, on telly. <laughs> what were you thinking? I'm sorry, we don't what cut... What were you thinking, Honestly, Jane? Sorry, we don't cut noodles. Don't, come, wow. in, don't because... come in here with your MBE. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, oh, we want you to have a long life now, you see? It, it's don't cut beautiful, noodles. It's beautiful, It's delicious. It's right, really good. Yeah, you, use the cutlery. Yeah. Uh, Ravai, <laughs> Vivek will be back later with a Diwali celebration dish. Uh, a taste it earlier. Mm. It is delicious. Stay tuned. Uh, plus, we'll be showcasing some of the best food and drink advent calendars available for 2020. Uh, don't forget, send in your photos or foodie questions to us at saturday.kitchen at cactustv.co.uk or join in the chat on social media using the hashtag Saturday Kitchen. Uh, and will Melanie be tucking into her food heaven roast saddle of lamb with mint sauce or her food hell okra stew with deep fried crispy okra? It'll go and log on to the website now and have your say. Right, time to catch up with Rick now as he continues his French adventure. And this week he's in Alsace. Uh, there you go, Ollie, very on message there. Uh, tasting a biodynamic wines in a family run winery. Have a look. Uh, thanks for that, Rick. Irresistible indeed. Now, we saw Rick making a tart flamme there, which is very Alsace. It's a, uh, a dish that's popular along the border of France and Germany, and it gives me a perfect excuse to make another Alsatian dish. Uh, this is choucroute garni. This is one of my desert island dishes. If you haven't tried it, it is delicious. Go and um, make it yourself. Here, I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, it's basically, uh, you need a lump of smoked meat, some sausages. I've got bratwurst here. So it's kind of a, a combination between sort of French and German, really. Uh, we've got the choucroute or sauerkraut. Uh, um, and don't be put off by that, it is delicious. I'm going to chuck some apples in there for a bit of sweetness. Uh, I've got a Toulouse sausage, I've got a black pudding. If you can get white pudding, so much the better. Uh, and I'm going to saute it all in a bit of duck fat, garlic and thyme, which quite frankly, no offence, Ching, makes everything tasty. Um, <laughs> so let's, let's start with that. Uh, so whole cloves of garlic. Uh, the meat's going to get browned and then it gets braised in some Riesling wine. There's a theme today, and um, and some stock for about sort of about two hours. So let's get that in. Get the sausages in just for a bit of colour. Sausages will want to split, so obviously be careful with those. Uh, move that aside, and then I'm going to chuck in some onions, the apple, uh, some spices. Um, I've got some caraway seed and some juniper going in there as well. Um, it's pretty much it. It's really simple, um, but it's it's a lovely kind of. It's a lovely combination uh, between the kind of the French influences and the German influences, and so much better, you know, if you've got a really great German beer or a bottle of Alsace. Uh, have you, you toured in Germany, presumably? I Melanie? spend a lot of time in Germany. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah. But this, I'm not really into sausages. <laughs> You're not into what? 
You're not into sausages. Ace. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> ingredients of this, and it wouldn't be my, my you know, personal choice. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to give, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give in to you. <laughs> but I'm willing to try. I mean, this is anything. proper full-on sausage business. <laughs> this is this is You can get more sausages than that. It's a great <laughs> phrase. I'm going to use it all the time. Uh, okay. Well, let's 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 get off let's get off of this there for now. I do like uh, sauerkraut there. <laughs> yeah. You are. Sauerkraut's great. And yeah. it's having the moment because it's fermented. It's very yeah. good for your gut, isn't it? Yeah. Lots of Delicious. people talk about gut health. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah, and obviously, you know, the fermented food is all the rage uh, at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it is, you know, if you're, you don't want to be put off by sauerkraut. It's, it's a lovely thing to try. Um, anyway, let's talk about your new album. Yes. Eighth, eighth yes. studio album. Yeah. Are you, are you still as excited about the albums when they come out? Do you know what? I think every time you wow. release something, you've spent so much time and put so much, you know, energy into it. You're always excited. But this one feels very special because it almost feels like a bit of a new chapter for me. I've worked right. with lots of new people. And I was very inspired by being back on stage with the Spice Girls last year. Okay, we did our yeah. stadium shows, which were amazing. And I just felt like I wanted to make a really fun record. I wanted to try and make people want to dance. Yeah. But I also wanted them to be able to listen. You know, I've been very honest about the lyrics. It's a lot about self-acceptance. And I want to empower people and entertain people, of course. Mm. And how, I mean, how did you cope making it during lockdown? Yeah, it's been interesting. Luckily, most of it was done before we, we got into the lockdown situation. Mm -hmm. And the last little bits we had to do, we could do some bits remotely, mm -hmm. some bits socially distanced. But um, the promotion's been wild because I've done so much on Zoom and, you know, different platforms. Yeah, I mean, from... how's that, though? But it's amazing. kind of amazing because I've spent, like, my mornings in Australia and then in the <laughs> daytime I've been in Europe, in the evenings in the US. Yeah. And it, it's been really full on. It's been great because it's kept me focused. You know, I, I, I need to be busy. And I think this year it's been hard. You know, we've all had a lot of time, haven't we, to think about... I mean, is that a thing for you? Do you need on? to keep, you, keep active, yeah. keep... Keep yeah, I, I think I, I do better when I'm very busy. Right. Yeah. I find it hard to relax. Yeah. But cooking's good for relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're doing it on live telly. <laughs> yeah. When Ching Hee Wang OBE, MBE, whatever it is, I've forgotten, has, ta has taken up all the time. Uh, so, anyway, let's back to this. So, stir the onions uh, for a leisurely amount of time. Uh, in with some chopped apple. They're going to give it a nice kind of uh, sweetness and a bit of a sort of a tartness as well. Uh, in with the spices, uh, the, so some juniper berries and the caraway. Uh, bay leaf, two bay leaves, chuck that in. Um, and then in with the wine. Bring that up, boil off the, uh, the acidity so you're left with all those nice kind of floral uh, flavours from, from a, a Riesling wine. And then when that's brought down, in with a stock and then back in with the, the kind of the larger pieces of meat. Sausages and the potatoes and the sauerkraut or choucroute go in about sort of um, 40 minutes before the end. So it all cooks nicely at the same time. Right, so that goes in. Ollie, did you have a say in the Riesling? In, in the it's show? a great question, Ching. Alas, no, Matthew didn't involve me in this one. But no. I would say, from our sat again, totally underrated, brilliant stuff, good choice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> right, let's move that aside. Um, so when you're, uh, you know, you, you obviously went to the Spice Girls, you then went out on your own. You, you know, the other week, year you went back with the Spice Girls. Is it very difficult? It's quite sort of terrifying going back out on your own because you've, you're kind of spreading the, the fear, I suppose, um, between I, a group as opposed to just being you. Do you know what? They're two very different things, and I have realised that there is enough room in my life for both. And, right. and I think when I started my, my solo career, like, way back, um, 1999, I released Northern Star, which was my first solo I record. I bought it. Ah, oh, did you? I bought it, yes. Oh. yes. Um, it was on a CD, as it was called then. Yeah, <laughs> CDs, they were a big thing. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it was an amazing time, but I think I was, I was really keen to show another side to myself. Yeah. So I think I kind of left my, some of my Spice Girl, you know, to the side. Yeah. And mm. through the years, I've realised, you know, it's, it's really important to embrace all aspects of who you are. And being mm. a Spice Girl is the reason I became a solo artist. Right. You know, I never would have had the opportunities that I've had. So this album really is a celebration of, of just the realisation of that. And yeah. just, I'm being sporty and being Melanie C and Mel C and, you know, all the other things that people tend to call me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, it's, I mean it, it, was, it was iconic, wasn't it? I mean, did you still kind of look back with such kind of fond memories oh, of that time? Oh, my goodness. Last year was amazing because we did the stadium shows and I think it, it hit us all for the first time, the impact that we'd had on this generation of young people. Well, you yeah. had an impact on me. Yeah. I, I mean, know we were talking about yeah. it. It's so nostalgic, okay. isn't it? You were saying it just takes you back to being a kid. and well, you empowered us. Times. You made us feel like, you know, we could do anything. Yeah. That the world was your oyster sauce. But you, you know what? That oh, is... Sorry, Jane. Let's <laughs> not let like, that go unnoticed. I love that was it. brilliant. The yeah. world was your oyster the sauce. The world is your oyster that sauce. But it's, that's the wonderful thing, I think, for us girls. We're so proud because, obviously, you know, we love our music. We're super proud of that. But that legacy of, mm. you know, girls feeling empowered, mm. boys feeling empowered, the LGBTQ plus community are great supporters of the Spice Girls, as we are of theirs. So it's, yeah, it's just a lot of love for us, and we are very grateful to our wonderful fans as well. To me, personally, you are like the Bond girls. You know, there was Bond and you yeah. loved him, but you were like the Bond girls yeah. and there were more of you. <laughs> You're a fan, weren't you, clearly? I'm such a fan. I mean, such a fan. I just, I actually, I, I have to admit, I haven't been sleeping all week because, you know... <laughs> oh, I, that's so <laughs> sweet. Oh. You actually want on my bucket list to cook for. Oh, I mean, my no goodness. kidding, no kidding. And oh, I have I, two of your records there well, for me to oh, sign. Oh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be signing those. <laughs> yes. And, when it's we can, I'll come around your house and you can cook a full meal for me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would be I'm amazing. I'm inviting myself over. Wow. And I'll bring my mum. Oh, yes, she loves please. Chinese she, food, which is so absolutely we welcome. Amazing. Speaking of which, this is, a date. This, is, this is my vinyl here. Don't, don't, I'd like you to sign that. Yes. I was going to talk to you about vinyl because yeah. obviously everyone's downloading music now. Apparently mm -hmm. they don't go to our price music anymore and queue up on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. Um, but vinyl, vinyl is a big thing. Vinyl is coming back. Please, Which is in. brilliant. Um, can you get a closer one <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking, man. Keep talking. I'll keep talking. So, yeah, no, it's brilliant and it's a wonderful thing to see and I think lots more artists are releasing in lots of different formats. Yeah. We do consume music differently. Everybody's yeah. online. And it's brilliant to be able to access all this music so yeah. quickly and easily. But I think the real fan base, they want something physical. They like to collect, it's like, you know? It's like, it's like Kindle books yeah. and actual yeah. physical books, isn't it? I mean, I love having the vinyl. I love the sound of it. Yeah. I love my record player that I don't get out of. And it's there. beautiful, the artwork. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you spend all this time creating yeah. beautiful artwork and you don't, can't and you, really you appreciate it on a computer. Yeah. 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 Well, Go on, I'll try a bit of sausage. <laughs> um, it's really what good. will I be making for Melanie at the end of the show? Will it be a food heaven? Roast lamb? Uh, if so, I'm going to roast a saddle of lamb in anchovy and thyme butter. I'm going to serve that with some roasted carrots and parsnips, as well as the cabbage leaves that have been stuffed with lamb mince, chestnuts, Ooh. mushrooms, <laughs> or finished with a mint sauce. Is that right? What's the wine? You know that. There's no wine yeah. at this point. Oh. In my fridge. Or will it be a food hell? <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna make. We didn't get your water either. So I'm gonna make an okra stew with tomatoes and garlic and chilli and spices. Uh, I'm gonna bake that and serve it with slices of okra that have been deep fried in buttermilk, polenta, and paprika. Until Chris, uh, go and log on to the website now and get voting. I love that white suit. I'd like a white suit, Ollie. Do you think I could pull it off? I've got one knocking around somewhere. Yeah. I think it might even be a safari suit. Yeah, of course you have. <laughs> of course you have. Very Roger Moore. Uh, right, still to come, uh, there's a lot of food and drink uh, advent calendars around this year. So we're showing you some of the best that we've found. And Melanie will want to be eating her food heaven at the end of the show. Uh, uh, but will you put a stop to that very... Uh, Voting for her food hell. I nearly put my back out in that. Uh, log on to the website now and have your say. Right, Vivek, you're cooking a Diwali dish, aren't you? Yes. So I'm, I'm cooking you a Diwali dish of uh, a Bengali stir fry of okay. shrimps, prawn, whatever you want, and some marrow. Very unusual. I mean, this is what the marrow looks like. It's called dudi in India. Okay. Um, you know, it's a it is quite bland on its own, but it's, in this yeah. dish, it does taste the flavours. Is this going to change my mind on marrow? Well, I hope it does, yes. It's like the king of allotments, isn't it? <laughs> people give you these You marrows. get loads and, yeah. They're this if big you can't and you find don't marrow, you, you can use courgette in this country. It's absolutely fine. Just peel it, whatever. What I've done with this is I've peeled it, um, got rid of the pith, I've got some turmeric and some mm -hmm. salt, and I've boiled it 15 minutes or so. Okay. That's probably the bit that takes the longest, to be honest with you. Um, in fact, longer than cooking the prawns. So. Uh, so this, this is a very simple looking recipe. Yeah, very simple. Um, and actually, it is pretty real time in terms of, 
you know, the cooking of it. But this is a classic Diwali it's dish. It's a classic dish. I mean, it wouldn't normally be served on its own. It would be a part of many, many things. Okay. I mean, in fact, you know, most feasts are like that. We bookend the meal with sweets at the beginning and sweets at the end. I mean, every Indian festival, especially Diwali, has got to be about sweets, which is why I've got you those sweets. I mean, it couldn't have come to your house and we not brought sweet. you sweets at I Diwali. I know, that would yeah. just be rude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't have, that, yeah, so that what, wouldn't work. What do we have here, then? So there? you've got three different types of sweets. You know, the, the yellow chickpea bowls, you see. Yeah. They're... Um, actually, two of the three are gluten-free. So there's... That's right. Laddu. That's Lord Ganesha's favourite sweet. Ooh. Yeah, everybody, like everybody serves that, everybody offers that, you know, it's... Cardamom in it. Yeah, there's nice, bits of nice. black cardamom seed in it. Nice, huh? yeah. Nice. Right What's this little, uh, funny little silver one? Oh, yeah, that's, that's the cashew nut barfi, you know? Mm. It's a cashew barfi. It's, um, it's considered to be what rich people give to each other. Oh, really? Yeah, it's quite expensive. It's like a marzipan, but, you know, with cashew mm. nut. I feel special. It's what yeah, you'd give yeah. me, Ollie. And then, yes, the yes indeed, one. And every day of the week. <laughs> yeah. The third one is, um, is what is traditionally made in homes by, you know, housewives. People spend days making these in homes. It looks like a Cornish pasty, but it's a sweet version of that. It's, it's a, a lot of work in these. Semolina, yeah, exactly. Very, very, very nicely, very beautifully done. You know, it's each one a labour of love, so to say. Mm. Yeah. Very, very sweet. And these are as important, aren't they, as, as the savoury? At Diwali, absolutely, yes. Yeah. It's, um, it's the kind of thing that, you know... And as I was saying, you know, you bookend the meal, both yeah. ends. When people arrive, you give them sweets. And then, depending on how many people you've, you've got coming home... Right. You, you have made what you, what you made, you know, have selection okay. of dishes. And then you go on... If, if somebody is still hungry at the end, you simply give you them more feed them more. off with, yeah. So what I've got here, I'm, no I'm making a little... No under catering going on there. Sorry? No under catering. No under catering whatsoever, <laughs> no. No, no. So what I've got here is I've got a little bit of cumin and some turmeric and some ground red chilies. OK. And I'm going to simply make it into a... And we should, we should say you, you're using a mustard oil, aren't you? Yeah, I've used this mustard oil. This is really oil. pungent. Very pokey. It's very, like, very pokey. um... It's like English mustard powder. You know the smell of fresh yeah. English mustard powder. Mm. You know, you were asking about, you know, how if would it work if you if you simply toasted Toast some seeds? seeds. No, no, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't. doesn't. Unfortunately, it doesn't. So for oh, so this, what, what's that kind of? That's just bringing a, a kind of a bitterness or a, a heat. That's both? the preferred medium of cooking, to be honest with you. Okay. Mustard oil is what they use in Bengal a lot. I mean, they, you can use, if you were rich, you were using a bit of ghee as well. Um, I've kind of kept this dish dairy-free, so... You know, I've kind of kept out of ghee. Right. So, that's happening. I just give it a minute or so, okay. just for the spices to fry out. OK. So, I mean, Diwali is obviously a big... Uh, sort of big family occasion. That's not going on this year. I mean, how, how are people going to be celebrating? Actually, you know, I mean, you know, Diwali has always been a very sort of uh, family occasion, per se. You know, it's been... It's, it's more than just religious. It has been a social and a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody in India celebrates Diwali. It doesn't matter about whether you're a Hindu or not, whether you're practicing... So, you know, practicing Hindu or not. Right. Everybody did and does. So can you say a little bit about the significance of, of light in Diwali? Yeah, Diwali is a festival of lights, you know. There's, uh, I mean, people, people clean their houses for, for days, literally. Uh, decorate their houses with little sort of, you know, beautiful um, sort of decorations going on. And then light deers and celebrate by exchanging gifts and giving each other whatever. So when we talk about sort of the celebration of, of, of festival light, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of good over evil, is it? Yeah, that essentially <clears throat> is, the, is the underlying spirit okay. of it. And, and this year, more so than ever, I think. Mm. Dare I say, Diwali in the past, when I was sort of younger and, you know, living in India, it was... it had a tendency of getting into sort of levels of ostentatiousness, which is okay. not necessarily, you know, what you needed. Right. Uh, whereas this year, it's got... given people an opportunity to actually connect, yeah. uh, you know, and go back into doing it the way 
Diwali has been celebrated, which is, which is essentially with families. Okay. And it's the spirit of it which is more important than the ostentatious display of wealth. I've got some puris I'm going to quickly fry. Right. Let's see how that does. Now, the cinnamon club is, uh, is closed, obviously, at the moment. Oh, well, um, at the moment, everything is closed except that, you know, cinnamon club and, and Battersea, the two restaurants, we've, we've kept it open for, for t deliveries, takeaways. Okay. And, you know, we, we think, you know, a lot of people got in touch with us and said, you know, they were missing the kind of things that they would come to us for. Right. You know, to enjoy, to celebrate, to have feasts and, you know, so, so you're doing these family. feasting menus? Exactly. So we've launched, you know, nationwide deliveries of feasts. Yeah. People can go on and, you know, order their nice. favourite things. It's a menu, a couple of really popular dishes, a whole grand sort of round yeah, that I've cooked on the show before. Like a lamb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I and remember, the that butter was chicken. delicious. Yeah, the butter chicken. And so people can actually go to the website, you know, order it, and we organise nationwide deliveries for them. Um, yeah. It's just... It's, it's, it's just anything, really, you know. It's what? been really interesting to see how the restaurant industry is. It has been. It has been very interesting to see how the restaurant industry is sort of, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I suspect a lot of what we see now is going to continue as well. I, I think so too. I think, you know, 20 years ago, if you said to me, would you be doing takeaways? I probably said, not a chance. Never. Yeah. <laughs> Not from Cinnamon Club. Yeah. Uh, but there you are, you know, you, and it is the reality of yeah. how things are, and it's about adapting, and, you know, it's just... And, 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 I, I, and I have to say that, you know, the restaurant industry has been phenomenal in being agile, being sort of swift to respond to whatever's changing. Yeah, I mean, there's been a real kind of survival mentality, hasn't there? Amongst yeah. Okay. Right, Nobody so, just to finish, a little bit of garam masala. See, the spices were so simple. A little bit of garam masala to finish. Why would I've you add the... that right at the end and not early on? Because it's a seasoning spice, you know, okay. it's a finishing spice. Um, the thing about... The thing about sort of good aromatic spices is that you don't want to be cooking too long. So you see, I've, I've been cooking with turmeric and I've cooked the, yeah. the chilies and the cumin, all the cheap spices, but the aromatic, the special ones, okay. you simply... Add at the very end just to finish things off. Right, so let's take this away. Okay. That's interesting. I've never, never um, come yeah, across Yeah, no, that. that's how, you know, that's how the whole function of a garam masala works. Right. It's an aromatic spice that you, you add as a finishing spice. It's, you know, yeah. you don't cook with everything all the time. Yeah. Right. In the same way you'd use soft herbs and hard herbs. Oh, exactly. Exactly that, mm. yeah. Quite similar. Well, I've tasted this once. It is pretty banging. Very, very nice. Did you just say this is really banging? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even necessarily a phrase I'd associate with you. <laughs> this is banging. Even if I say so myself. <laughs> I just sort of... I love what, you know, ajawan, um, which is also raduni, right. mustard oil, cumin, ground red, you know, so ground and whole red chilies. What it does, yeah. I just think it's... Have a look. Have you been to the cinema club? The Puri's... I haven't, you know, I've good. always wanted to go and never made it. Yeah. Well, well, now, it's now you know the owner. Yeah. I tell you, Melanie, <laughs> I tell you, I've been doing this show for over 12 years and I barely get any attention from the kids <laughs> on this one. <laughs> this time, though, it's special. Oh, oh really? Melanie, yeah. Melanie sees uh, it. Uh, there you go, people. <laughs> so we've got... Lao Chingri, yeah. a Bengali stir-fry of prawns and a puri, marrow, enjoy. Delicious. Ace. Right, try that. I'm excited yeah. for this Be one. Excited. This is right up my Be street. No sausages legs, here. <laughs> <laughs> Offending you with my sausages. <laughs> <laughs> There's a phrase I didn't think I'd say this morning. <laughs> 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 Mm. Right. Oh, yeah. That's really good. That's good. Great ratio of prawns to marrow as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, normally they put a lot less, a lot more marrow, a lot less prawns. Yeah, I'm, just, but... I'm cooking for two of you, so it's fine. Exactly. And we're celebrating. Oh, my goodness, it's so good. Isn't that good? Those shrimp prawns, whatever we call them, they're huge. Mm. They're so meaty, they're lovely. Mm. Right, so good. Mm. Oh. 
What's this? It is such a tasty dish, Matt, and I was enthralled with the mustard oil as well. It brings a punchy element, and for the mm. wine, I've gone with a maverick rosé that I'm so thrilled to share with you. It's called Left Field Rosé. It was made in lockdown in 2020 in New Zealand, and it's down on offer at the moment for $8.99, which actually, for a wine like this, I think is a great price. It's a maverick blend of pinotage from South Africa. Uh, it's, it's a grape from South Africa. It's not actually imported in. Uh, it's Merlot, and then Armaeus, which is a grape you associate with Italy. So all grown in New Zealand, but the coming together of three great varieties you wouldn't normally expect. And what that gives to the wine is fruitiness, depth, spiciness, and an unlikely combination that gives a near perfect balance. And also, I love that it's a rosé. I love the colour. It's to celebrate the Festival of Light. So happy Diwali. Keep, Thank you very much. Keep Maverick talking, Ali. Yeah, this is too good. What, what do you think of the one? I think it's a great match. Maverick. Yeah. That's the it's word really, I mean, um, it's, it's sturdy, isn't it? It stands up to this. Stands up. Mm. It's robust. I'm going to invoke my favourite phrase, it's butch rosé. And that is one of the things <laughs> that I love about rosé. It doesn't have to be light and simple and refreshing. It can be richer and it can be complex and it can be fabulous to pair with food. Butch rosé. It's really handling yeah. the mustard really well, mustard oil. How's so that going down over there? Oh, it's so good. good isn't it? That wine's a bargain. Yeah. How much? Eight ninety nine. Do you work for them? Uh, right, the website ferry is now closed, and we're going to find out if Melanie is facing her food heaven or food hell very soon. Okay, mm -hmm. it's time to sort out your advent calendar options for 2020. Uh, every year, there are more and more types available. Food and drink options have gone way beyond that cheap chocolate I used to love. Uh, so we wanted to explore some of the best calendars currently available. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to be quick because they're already selling out fast. Who knew? Uh, anyway, so let's have a look at some of these. Let's start over here. This is Bon Maman uh, advent calendar. Let's bring this in. This is kind of cute. I like this. Look, looks like, a, looks like a doll's house. Quite traditional look. I like that. Different jam flavour every single day. So 23 different flavours. 24th, which is my birthday, in case anyone's interested. Uh, you get a special... <laughs> just dropping that in there. Uh, you get a special gift. I'm not going to uh, spoil that one in case anyone's got that. But that looks, uh, that looks really nice. So you get uh, 23... Uh, there you go, Tom. Look at that. 23 of those. Nice little jams. I like those ones we nick from hotels yeah. at the buffet. <laughs> so you don't have to do that yeah. anymore. Uh, how is that? 23 jams. Can you name 23 jams? No, I can't. Yeah. Don't test me. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're not on the. You've got uh, cherry, cherries and Christmas spices. Mm. That's delicious. How is it? It's yeah, nice. It's really fruity. Good. Uh, right, Candy Kittens Advent Calendar. This is this one. You build this yourself. OK, uh, it comes flat packs <laughs> like uh, like most good furniture these days. Uh, you make all the angles up, but you fill up these individual little boxes and they've got little um, little sweets inside them. Uh, and I think I believe they're vegan, vegan sweets. So that will please you. Mm. I mean, it looks um, like looks like a little pig face. Doesn't it? They're really good, actually. Hey? Yeah, I, like I think my niece would love them. Oh, quite nice. Like yeah, they're quite I mean, sour, aren't they? Mm. I like a sour sweet. I like a sour yeah. sweet. Mm. Great in a mm. car. Mm. Packet of sour sweets in a <laughs> yeah. car. Yeah, from the services. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, easily like pleased. Um, right, who, me? Very easily pleased yeah. to know that, Ollie. Um, right, so this one, this big boy here, let's move this aside. Joe and Seth's. Candy kittens, by the way, is eight quid. Uh, Joe and Seth's, this looks quite um, dramatic. There you go. Duh. Obviously, Joe and Seth's um, popcorn um, advent calendars. Let's have a look at this. Right, so let's open. Ooh, look at that. Hang on, skip my... Just get a little bag of popcorn. That's nice. So, there's about three pieces of popcorn in there. <laughs> that'll, that'll keep you going. <laughs> but um, that looks very nice, actually. So, gourmet popcorn. Um, 19 different flavours. Nice, yeah. Brandy butter mm, you've got yeah, over yeah, there. That's good. How is yeah, that? That's really, that's really good. That's really naughty. Mm. They do gingerbread, salted caramel, orange chocolate. Toffee, apple and cinnamon. I'm a bit like that about flavouring your popcorn, though. Sugar you don't like salt. a sausage. I don't like a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, that's nice. What's this? The brandy butter one? Yeah. That's nice. So it's it's nice. kind of like a traditional kind of toffee popcorn. Yeah. Mm. But don't be doing chocolate orange and all that. How do you get on with, like, truffle and stuff like that? I bet what, you don't truffle, like that. what, like truffle on...? Yeah, truffle on, on popcorn. 
Um, nice. I like, cheese and I like truffle. truffle on everything. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. This is nice. I yeah, like this is good. Like but chocolate good. orange popcorn, mm, it's taking it a bit far. No, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sure it's far. wonderful. Right, this boy, I'm going to hand over to you, Ollie. This is your number. Tell us about this. Yeah, I love this. This is an advent calendar that is full of fantastic beers. And it comes from honestbrew.co.uk. Yes. It's £64.90, which works out around £2.70 a beer. But the thing I really love about this is you get 12 that are exclusive, and they've selected brilliant craft beer from all around the UK and Europe. So for us to have a little sip, uh, Melanie, you may not get along with this one. This is a chocolate orange and pastry <laughs> <laughs> from what she doesn't time. like things messing around with, Ollie. Yeah. I'm learning this. Yeah, yeah, I feel bad now. But it is for me one of the finds of the Christmas season. I love this. I think it, it does what it says on the tin. It's uh, that is very different, I have to say. I'm a little um, bit confused about these advent calendars because traditionally they're for kids, right? And they were sweets and you yeah. have a chocolate every yeah, morning. <laughs> yeah. What, you have this? Is this breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is in my house. Brunch. Yeah. <laughs> Brunch. <laughs> I like that. That's nice. That beer is really peculiar, though. I have yeah, to say. it tastes I love a bit it. like that's, a... that. That's an acquired taste, that one. Yeah. Right. So down the front here, we got M&S uh, felt stock in advent calendar. If you want to make your own, obviously, uh, we got uh, this sort of thing at home. Uh, you can stick your own um, chocolates in there. Uh, kids always like that. Uh, I eat them all. And this one here, which I really like. Um, this wooden affair. You can fill it with whatever you want. Customize your own doors. Uh, Nine ninety nine from Aldi. I really like that. That looks so lovely. Yeah, that's yeah. a really good idea. Isn't so actually, it? it feels like it's really made, good. Made yeah, decently. well made. So there you go. A few, uh, few advent calendar options for you. Uh, so will Melanie be facing her food heaven, roast saddle of lamb with roasted vegetables, or her food hell, okra stew with deep fried okra? Snotty okra. Time to find out whether Melanie will be facing her food heaven or food hell. So it could be lamb, roast lamb, uh, cabbage. You love cabbage, so we're going to uh, stuff that. Um, what else do you love? That's pretty much it. A roasted parsnips, roasted parsnips roasted vegetables. Mint sauce. Could, could be a mint sauce, right? <laughs> Fill in the gas. Sauce as well. So it could be that. Getting the order in. Uh, <laughs> really specific, but not sausages. <laughs> Didn't get that memo. Uh, no. Or it could be hell uh, okra. So nice okra, spicy okra stew with crispy okra pieces. Da da da. Uh, where do you think we've gone with this? Where the viewers voted. Um, I, do you know what? I know the viewers are lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so they're gonna oh, yeah. go for the lamb. <laughs> Can you see? Can you see yeah. that? Can you see that link? I'll tell you what they want. What they really, really want. <laughs> Seventy percent of people really wanted heaven. Yes! Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you much. see what I did? As well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's do this. Uh, okay. So Vivek, you're going to do the lamb. Yeah. So okay. we've got the saddle lamb. So you know the whole kind of bit here. Uh, we're going to open that up. We're going to mash up a little bit of anchovy with butter, some chopped thyme. That's going to go inside that. He's then going to roll and tie that. Sear it in a pan. That's going to go into the oven for about sort of 15 minutes, depending on how you like it. It's then going to come out looking like that. Ooh, Whoa. very nice. Uh, so we put that to one side. Uh, roasted carrots. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Let's go on with this. So here I've got some um, minced pork and some minced um, uh, lamb, obviously. Uh, let's get on with this. So chopped shallot, bit of garlic in a pan, and then sweat that down. Um, and then I stir that through with some mushrooms and the chestnuts. So it's kind of like kind of a layered lasagna, really. So you've got the cabbage, because you like a bit of Savoy cabbage, don't you? I do. It's my favourite cabbage, actually. Yeah. <laughs> of all the cabbages? That's of all it. the cabbages. Oh. How many cabbages are there? <laughs> <laughs> Put it in an advent calendar. <laughs> but it always used to be like, I always, when I think of cabbage, I think, what's the, it's just called white cabbage, isn't it? The white one. Yeah. And like when we were kids, you just had it the like one you stick in coleslaw. to death, didn't you? Yeah. But then you get your Savoy. It's a bit more, I, I feel like I've gone up in the world because like, now I like totally Savoy. Totally yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Now, you were saying earlier you, um, you, you may take the, uh, the new album on tour. Make yes, sure. that is the plan, actually. I have tour dates April, May. We are constantly monitoring the situation because obviously it's all a little bit of an unknown at the moment. Yeah. But yeah, that's across Europe. But the plan will be as soon as it's safe to travel and to get into venues together to tour this record all over the world. Yeah. That'd yeah. be amazing. And what sort of, I mean, of all the places, I mean, without upsetting anyone in Europe, obviously, I mean, are there any sort of destinations you, you sort of, you're itching to get back to? Um, you know, I just love playing anywhere and everywhere, but I do feel very excited about getting back to places like Southeast Asia oh, and yes. South America <laughs> and, and the US. There's quite a lot of territories I haven't been to for many years. Yeah. I've continued to work in Europe, but this album seems to have opened up the, the whole world. 
um, internationally. So yeah, I'm excited. Well, it's kind of a, it's, it's a music genre that sort of transcends uh, countries. I mean, people like disco music. They like that sort of club music. Yeah, I, I think it's it is. It's, it's really having the moment, isn't it? And um, lots of artists are doing it really brilliantly. Yeah. I know there's two big records out this week. I'm excited about Kylie's albums out. Yeah. Little again, mixes big disco records tunes. out. Yeah. So. Yeah, lots of great music out there. We had uh, a while ago. We had Jessie Ware on. She's got a, a fantastic kind of disco. I love Jessie. Disco. That album is <laughs> Good, incredible. Huh? Oh, it's my really fave. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of the uh, one of the joys of doing this show. It's actually you get sort of uh, get to listen to all this this new stuff that's yeah. coming out. Otherwise, you just you know it sort of you know, often bypass you. Uh, speaking of which, while I'm doing this, I'm just sauteing off the shots, garlic, the mushrooms, and the chestnuts. That will take uh, hopefully about thirty seconds while we listen to one of your uh, your new Ooh. tracks, "Who I Am." Let's have a listen. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been like being early. This was the, um, the first single it. from the album, and this one is, it just kind of, it's a great introduction to it all really, it's about self-acceptance, being comfortable in your own skin, and I did a really fun video where there was, it was like a museum of me, which was a little bit surreal. I saw it! Yeah, all these different, like, moments in my career. Yeah. And, um... Amazing. Are you still going? <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was lovely. It was it was quite weird to shoot, but it, it kind of allowed me to make peace with different. Was it quite cathartic? It really was, and it kind of made the song have even more meaning. Weirdly. Yeah. So. Because um, yeah. there was there was lots of images in that video, um, but you you go, oh, I remember that stage because there were very different stages to your yeah. career, weren't there? Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Was it very difficult? I mean, you're you're kind of living your your life, your most kind of vulnerable part of your life, I suppose, when you're that age, in the public eye. Mm. I mean, is there a, you know, however successful, there must have been a side where you thought, do you know, this is tough. Yeah, this is I, I, I did. I, I mean, I did suffer. I, I found it hard. I think you grow up with all these dreams and aspirations, that and was... you think about all the wonderful things mm. that come along with it, but everything has a downside, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I think as a young person, it's, it's quite hard to navigate. I think even more now with social media and there's very little privacy, I think, for people in mm. the public eye. But there's no let yeah. up, is there? No. Mm. You know, I mean, it's hard to remember a time when there weren't mobile phones and things like that, where you did have sort of downtime. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but now it's, yeah, it must, it's, it must be even worse. Yeah, people. it's constant, yeah. 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 But, you know, I think everything changes in life, doesn't it? And you have to embrace it. And I think mm. there are so many good things. I mean, thank goodness for technology. This year, you know, it's kept us all connected, hasn't yeah. it? True. Yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, we always look, sort of looking at the dark side of, of social media and yeah. things like that. But no, yeah. it's, it's absolutely kept everyone together, hasn't it? That's right. what I love about you. You're always so down to earth and positive about everything. Mm. Which is great. Like me. I try. <laughs> I try. I think you need to, no, you need to learn. Take a leap. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this year as well. I think especially, um, you know, being a mum for the kids, it's been so hard, especially when they were off school, yeah. to keep them positive because it's so, you know, it's been a scary year for everyone, hasn't it? So many things are so unknown and, mm. yeah. you know, what yeah. the future holds. So we really have to draw upon the positives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's what ukulele is. Give her that. She knows that. Ready to go to the other. That's yeah. beautiful. So, yeah. so yeah. Seal it off. Nice colour, and then yeah. that goes in. That's quite a thick piece, so that'll go in for about sort of, I'd say, upwards of 20 minutes. Right. So, if you put that in for Beck, that's great. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Melanie, can I ask a DJ question? You can. It, well, and I, oh, you, and I've always wondered, how on earth do you know? What to play next? Because the you know the responsibility is massive. The entire mood of the room depends on you. Ah, uh, I'm going to reveal a secret now. I always pre-prepare pre -prepare my set list. Oh, yes. and I think most okay. DJs do that now because you know the technology oh. is amazing. But I think you know a, a more accomplished DJ. I'm quite new to it. I think obviously a much more experienced DJ. If there's a certain thing that's not really working in the room, or you they read the room and they'll maybe change songs in and out. Yeah. Love it. Like a great yeah. wedding DJ. <laughs> but do you know what I do? I just play songs that I like. I'm yeah. very selfish yes. when I DJ. <laughs> I just think, my decks, I can do what I want. <laughs> do you right. Do you right. <laughs> right, so this is the little cabbage, um, kind of, uh, what, stuffed cabbage, cabbage lasagna. So, uh, so layers of uh, blanched cabbage leaves. We've got the, uh, the filling, which is shredded cabbage, and the meat, and the chestnuts. Uh, I've got some stock, uh, which you kind of dribble in here, let it, let it absorb. And then, 
That's it. Or dribble it all over the board. Uh, if you've got more time, it's very easy. <laughs> but, uh, right, so then you stick that in the oven. Hang on. Stick that in the oven for about, um, I don't know, about an hour, something like that, on a low temperature. Um, and then you'll know because it sort of comes away from the side. It's another form of sausage. <laughs> I've just realised. <laughs> More sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I think sausage sales are going to shoot through the roof. <laughs> <after morning. Not. laughs> right. Sausage King Matt Tebbett. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Sausage King. OK, so I'm going to just slice this up. Um, obviously, really important to let the lamb rest. Let's get it all out, actually. Uh, let the lamb rest for a good um, sort of 15 minutes or so. Right. So, um, is there a story behind the one blue hand, by the way? Yes, the blue nails. There is. So today is World Diabetes Day. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, my brother's type one, actually. So I am a, a supporter of, of the charity, and uh, we're, we're nailing okay. it. So this is the blue nails, and the reason it's one hand is because, and I know lots of people out there will identify with this. I can only do my left hand. <laughs> what? Is that I can only do my left one? hand. Yeah. I couldn't do the. <laughs> oh, I thought that was part of the um, no. part of the thing. I should have pretended it was like some fashion statement, yeah. but no, it's just my <laughs> inability to paint nails. But yes, Diabetes UK, World Diabetes Day today. Mm -hmm. Right, OK, so there's the lamb. I hope you like it pink. Mm. Do you? Yes, I do. Good, I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah winning yeah. some of the... Yes. Winning at that. Yeah. So blanch the, the mint leaves, cooled it down, chopped it, some red wine vinegar, some salt and some sugar in there. Ooh. Roasted veg. Roasted wedge. Okay. There you go. <clears throat> I'm so pleased I got my heaven. Well, there's a lot Same. of yeah. a lot of fans out there. Very yeah. high votes yeah. as well. Seventy percent, I have to yeah. say. Right. Ooh. Bit of that. Um, tell you what, just give us a little bit of oil, a bit of olive oil, just to split that vinegar. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm kind of missing the old pub Sunday lunches. Oh, tell oh, me. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I'm getting back to that. I know. So, yeah, this is my little really version of that pub. today. Right. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Okay, give that a try. The Get mint is there. pretty punk, uh, punchy. punchy. Yeah, mate. Pokey, punchy. Right, what do we got? Ollie? We have Agricola Fusta Organic Dardell Red Ooh. Wine yeah. from Catalonia. Thank you. And it's an amazing wine, $8.99 from Majestic. It's predominantly Grenache, but it's really, really silky with a little bit of spicy syrup in there. And it's from a place called Terra Alta. And it's a highland, lots of mountains. So the mountain breeze, the sea breeze, mm. create real finesse to the wine. Gorgeous with lamb and an absolute steal for under a tenner. That's very nice. It's very smooth. Actually. Really silky. That's those sea breezes and the mountain breezes meeting up. The high altitude, about 350 metres. And I think, you know, an organic wine as well, it's going to have lots of nice vibrancy to it. I think Pepe, who makes it, has done a sterling job here. Family run, happy to recommend it. Lovely. Mm. Nice one, Ollie. Always, uh, always over the really number. Good. How is that, Mel? Sorry. Got one complaint. Oh, yeah? Where's the roasties? <laughs> 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 You've been <laughs> such an easy guest. Will <laughs> 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 you welcome me back? <laughs> Saturday Kitchen Live. Uh, thanks to Vivek, Ching, Ollie, and of course Melanie. All the recipes from the studio are on the website bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. I'm back with more Best Bites tomorrow at 10am on BBC Two. And next week we're back in live with Ollie Dabu, Asma Khan, and Omid Jalili. Have a great weekend. Bye for now. <laughs>